What's up, everybody? We're back, and we're ready for the losers match. So one of these two players is going to be eliminated. The winner will go on to fight stats. Whoever wins there will get that final fourth spot in the round of four. Yeah, and this is an important match for both these guys, of course, as no one really wants to have to qualify for the internationals, but top six here, I believe it gets you to DreamHack Dallas, if I'm not mistaken, so. A lot on the line, both for Shin and for Gumiho, and of course, a top four will also be really nice. Going to top four means that you don't need to qualify for the next season at GSL, and GSL, as small as it is, round of 16 tournament, it's still really hard to qualify for. We have a lot of upsets, a lot of top players, even SOS trying to come back to qualify, hasn't been able to do it the past couple of seasons, so. Both these players would love to advance from this match with so much on the line, and we're gonna get a little bit of a tour of some of the new maps which we haven't seen just yet here in GSL, both Post, Youth, and Crimson Court, I think their first showing here. Yeah, let, let's get an idea of these maps here. Uh, you know, we already had Shin when he uh, was on one of the newer maps do something pretty crazy. Will he have anything planned on these first two? We're gonna find out. Um, our game is loading up, guys. Again, the loser, is out of the GSL. The winner goes on to that final best of three. Okay, so Shin, the top. Gumiho in the bottom here. Uh, we immediately have an SCV coming out on the map, but it looks like it's one SCV and not two. Yeah, we'll see if another one gets pulled. The very early SCV certainly is going to be a proxy, but how Does much he want to make it in the net? Oh, it's going to be right there. Yeah, there are a lot of Reaper jump spots on this map, so. Yeah, it well, makes sense. Makes sense to go for this. So, um, you are seeing this right, by the way. There are gold minerals <laughs> and blue minerals. It's like a you ever seen somebody with a gold tooth? That's what I always feel like when I look at this. <laughs> this space is a yeah, gold tooth. A <laughs> yeah, that's um, right. And it's basically in the main base, too. This is almost the first time I, I saw this map played on it. I was like, man, that feels like this is a map for the 2v2 pool, you know? Right, yeah. With a well, really interesting main base setup. You have this one ramp on the right side with a mineral wall in that you can mine out. And then there's the opening on the left side. But I, I think this is great. You know, the advantage of RTS is we have a bunch of different maps. And I think mm -hmm. over the past several years, I think we got a little bit too formulaic. I think they relied a little Ooh, bit too much on pro feedback. Tasteless. I think that Overlord's going to spot this barracks Ooh. right when it completes. Doop. Yep, he sees it. But I think the fact that we have maps that are kind of going into uncharted territory in competitive one versus one is good. It will cause some maps that make for weird or maybe bad games, but it will also create maps that make good and improved games. Yeah, maps like this can be a lot of fun too, especially in a map pool with nine maps in total. So you have some extra vetoes. I I, I appreciate map beggars getting a little bit more creative. I'm trying to remember what map it was many many years ago where there was a gold base in the center and we had I think a player maybe even the GSL lift their command center at the very start of the game and plant it on that gold base, which is so much fun. Uh, first reaper now coming in. Their links aren't out just yet, but some nice micro here are the drones dropping down in support crawler. Ooh, that one drone barely surviving. You know, getting a lot of drones into the red, but no kills with this first reaper. Yeah, not able to get in there. These links pursuing that reaper. And it's just the one reaper too. The barracks is already going back home, and we have a factory in production back at the natural. Yeah, you know, with Gumiho, keep in mind this is also a scout to confirm, you know, what the Zerg is doing here, and you know. Ragnarok, or, or sorry, Shin is is a little bit a uh, little bit more cheesy in some ways than these other players. And behind this is going to be triple command center. So we've had a lot of games where it's like light harass scout into three bases. Zerg doesn't have any way to figure this out just yet. Uh, it's hard to get over to the uh, double CC that's there. Oh, nice body block. That was sick. <laughs> Ew, we did it again. Kumiho is really <laughs> yeah. testing the limits here at this reverb. Yeah, it's it's, it's kind of crazy. He's being that aggro to try to get in there. If you lose that, you don't know what's going on, so. Uh, oh, Lord gonna come back here into the main base. Now, I don't think he's actually checking for the third command center, and he might not get an idea unless he moves that Overlord over here to the right side, but with the factory nearly done with the reactor, we'll see if he fully commits, because those Cyclones, if they do come out, they will be able to clean this up. Instead, it will be Hellions. 
Got Roach Warren here for Shin, now taking that third hatchery. So the Overward Scout is going to be able to get all the way over here into the corner of the base, but I, I still think Shin does not know this is the 3cc opening. I mean, he might have an idea because he sees only one gas there in the main base as he flies over, but Gumiho very easily could have two gases at the natural expansion right now if he wanted to. I'm curious also how aggressive Shin is going to be with this Roach Warren because, of course, with gold bases going back to the introduction of gold bases in StarCraft II, being able to afford a more mineral-heavy economy, mineral-rich economy on a low drone count has often led to some really aggressive plays with Roaches that have been very effective. But, I mean, I would feel like he could also just get Marauders as easily, right? I mean, it's like high mineral, lower gas. I mean, the thing is, when we see um, Zergs go for... Uh, gold bases on other maps, the gold bases are in places like this on the map, right? They're out there. This is where you both just have it. And so I, I you're right. I mean, it's probably very tempting to go for roaches because that kind of maths out nicely. But at the same time, it also, the Terran gets that too. So, you know, this is going to be a tough cast, I think, in general, because it's like we've never really cast it on a map like this, right? Yeah, it's hard really to get a feel for exactly what the economies are going to be. I mean, the worker counts are a little bit disingenuous in a situation like this one because naturally you're going to have less workers. There's two less patches, I think, in the natural expansion. It's just yeah. half of them are gold. It could just ramp up into action a little bit more quickly. We've got the double eBay, by the way. Um, and so, you know, I think Gumiho already has a pretty... I'm looking at the way Gumiho is developing and playing this out. I really like it so far. Yeah, it's working really well. Let's take this third base all the way down here. Banshee's coming out for map control as well as Hellion. So really playing a map control heavy game with these units. Meanwhile, macroing up a storm back at home, getting that third command center up so early and now going into double engineering bay with what, four more barracks in production? Yeah, I like his game plan so far. This is looking pretty solid. So the uh, next gold base, the true gold base <laughs> for Zerg is being taken. And Zerg will always get that if they're expanding in, in a normal fashion before the Terran. Zerg always expand uh, faster than the Terran. So, if I'm looking at this game correctly, I feel like we're going to see Terran push this gold base probably as it finishes or a little bit after it finishes. Maybe, but at the same time, I'm not sure exactly how much Gumiho is going to have on the board once that hatchery is done. 1-1 one, one is about halfway complete. True. His Banshee's going to try and find some damage. Should be able to get at least one queen. So nice pick right there for Gumiho. Just take whatever you can get with these units that are serving their primary role in terms of, you know, just a safety net here that allow you to take that third command center so early on the low ground. Angeling comes in, does hit the siege tank in the Marines, but that's not too much of a tell at this stage in the game here for Shin. And Zerg is really just kind of powering up. Spire is nearly done. Bailing Nest is getting started as well as an infestation pit. We have Ravagers in production. We have all sorts of upgrades coming through. Roach speed, Ling speed, 1-1 one, one as well in the evolution chambers. As Shin is basically fleshed out his economy, especially with his final round of, I think, 10 drones. We're on four bases with, I think, what, nine mineral patches in total. <laughs> that you gotta, that's you so gotta funny. Turn on Flyer Helper if you haven't yet, Shin, so that doesn't yeah, happen yeah. again. <laughs> he actually whips that <laughs> shot that he should have gotten. That's so funny. Uh, but yeah, Shin is pretty much fully online right now, and I wouldn't be surprised if he just put pedal to the metal and just pumped units from here on out up until he hits high, because his saturation isn't going to get much better with any more drones. He really can just pump units out. I feel like we're watching two armies just go in the middle of the map and fight each other. It's mm -hmm. like, one of you is wrong. <laughs> yeah. You can't both be right in this moment. Uh, he's going to pick up. Oh, no, never mind. Then they both back off. Again, one of you is wrong. <laughs> well, both players are building some pretty powerful armies. I mean, Gumiho only just now throwing down that fourth command center on the low ground. So he does need to play the map control game just to make sure that safely does get up. So he is taking a little bit of a risk building that on the low ground as opposed to floating it in for the main base. But really, both economies are just developing into these very strong armies that haven't clashed at all in this game just yet. And Shin's creep spread, it's looking fantastic. Already reaching the halfway point here in the map. Beelining it towards Gumiho's base. He's setting up for a fifth hatchery over here at this blue mineral base. Gumiho's just getting closer and closer to 2-2. Two, two. Okay, he's going to come in there and try to chase those Ravagers down. The Ling's going to come in here. I don't know if they intended to, to catch these uh, Marines here, but they did spot him. The Ultra Scavenger's coming down. Yeah, two Vipers as well. Yeah. 
But the thing is, Shin is already very close to Max, so I, I think yeah. he wants at least one good fight in. Build up a bank. Yeah, I, I think you're totally right, because what you want to do is you want to trade out your army and then have so much money and so much larva that you immediately dump back into that. And so this fourth base is naturally going to be a big target here for Shin, but Gumiho seems well prepared to defend this. He's got Hellbats on the ground. T2 will, is nearly complete. Vehicle level 1s is completing at this moment. Marauder is getting mixed in as well as he's starting to identify, you know, the bailing count is rising. There are a good number of roaches as well. A little bit more meat in this army and... Oh, nice spread there too from Gumiho. This is a scary push. This is so close also from the 4th command, Terran Command Center to this gold base. Yeah, this is going to be the target. It did come a little bit later, and that makes me a little bit more concerned. Not that I think he could have pushed it earlier, but he's uh, at this point in time, Shin's already soaked up so much of the minerals from the gold base. He's going to back up, and it looks like he's just going to abandon it. The thing is, Gumiho's only on 64 workers. He's playing on a really high army supply. Right. And Shin's army, it's expensive. He's not really building that much of a bank in terms of gas. It's mostly just minerals that he's banking up because he's morphing so many banelings. He's morphing, what, it's going to be like 45 plus banelings on the map. It's a pretty, um, it, it's a, a lot of narrow areas you're fighting on, which means splash damage gets optimized a little bit more as the banelings hug each other, turning corners. So basically Gumio comes in, <laughs> sledgehammers down that gold base and leaves. I mean, he, he kind of went in there uncontested. Lead up these roaches, Shin bring up a little bit of supply. He does have two very high energy Vipers on the map right now. In fact, full of energy, so Blinding Clouds are on the table here. Those Siege Tanks can get disabled should Shin decide to attack into this off creep, and in fact he will. Not gonna give Gumiho the time he needs to reinforce with those units on the left side of the map, but this is a pretty good trade looking for Gumiho. Not even all of the Siege Tanks went down, and that was expensive for Shin too. Yeah, you know, it doesn't feel like Shin can really find an out. Um, and Gumiho is just going to continue to kind of roam and look for openers. We've got nukes coming here, which I guess you get far enough along in a game like this that it only makes sense, right? You know, uh, th this is such a, a maze-like map in the middle. It feels like you can set up tanks and uh, marines and marauders and kind of evenly spread them out and then just use nukes to hit them from afar. And Zerg is not going to have a whole lot of places to go. You know, a lot of these expansions on the map are kind of lining the middle. Yeah, and this high ground just kind of sections off the entire middle. It's a great staging ground for Gumiho to push off of, and it's really hard for Shin to actually maintain creep on that area. Oh, finally he's gonna get that Viking. All right. <laughs> he's got practice that now. Was, that was revenge from before, <laughs> the, for the one that got away. He opened his settings and turned on fire helpers yeah. so he can actually shoot it. <laughs> but this allows uh, Gumiho to try to run up. Good pickups here. Seems like th that was everything that was supposed to be attending those tanks earlier. Yeah, a lot of these takes do go down. Ghosts are on the field. Baneling's also coming in, but Gumiho's actually setting up a really good surround, and this is a big choke point to come in here for Shin. I and mean, the Baneling's are finding good connections, but the Ultras and the Roaches really can't find any angle to attack into this, so Shin is now going to remax. And Shin is basically just trying to run Gumiho dry. He doesn't want to let him take a fifth base. He wants to keep attacking into Gumiho's army. And look at the uh, amount of minerals that Shin is banking here. Yeah. I think we're starting to see the impact of just being given gold minerals early mm -hmm. on. Um, oh, this base is potentially going down right now. Even army supplies and Shin has not had the time to remax on the balance. Oh, EMP gets every single Viper there on the left side. That was pretty sick. Shin just lost all of his spell casting, and Kumiho's army here in the front line is so powerful. The Bailings get some pretty good connections there on the left side. The ghosts get picked up, so they will survive. But the reinforcements even coming in. I mean, Shin, he doesn't have any gas. He can basically only make lings and a handful of ultras right now. Infestation Pit is going to go down. With armor, Shin should be able to push forward off this position with these Ultralists, especially with Transfuse here on the back end. I, I mean, mean off crate, there's no support for them. I think Shin's even lacking Larva right now because the remax of Lynx isn't coming in. He just yeah. doesn't have enough hatcheries. He's on, what, four hatch? And we're just now seeing Terran really uh, suck up all these gold minerals over here, or, or will soon. He's going to attack it again, and it seems like, yeah, with those gold minerals you get early, you get a lot of Marines, a lot of Marauders. It kind of sets up really nicely to have the stuff that fights Zerg where there's an excess. And I know this is like map one, but at least this is my read on it so far. That's a pretty good read so far because Gumiho's in really good control of this game. Shin with one last Hail Mary right here coming into this gold base. Now that's a good connection right there where the Banelings get both the SCVs, the Siege Tank, and the Marauders. 
So those lifting up into the medevac. Meanwhile, Gumiho on the other side of the map is going for this counterattack. Trying to micro against an Ultralisk with all these <laughs> Marines is not really a winning fight. Yeah. Surprising he's How not lifting them up. Those all could die to this up? Ultra. Like, what is <laughs> going to happen? I mean, Gumiho, there's so much happening on the map right yeah, now. He's trying yeah. to defend against this push here in the center. Bile's now running down. Are going to connect with some of the Marauders. I can't believe we almost saw one Ultra killing like 50 <laughs> I know, Marines. I was like, you know this unit interaction. That was the win that Shin needed, by the way. If he didn't hit in at that time before the planetary was done, he might be out of this game. But instead, he reset the bio count. He killed a lot of SCVs. He was able to stop the fifth base from getting up there for Gumiho. And he got a good chunk of bio as well. Marines and Marauders both went down to those huge Bailey connections in the mineral line. And maybe he has a chance in this one, but still, Gumiho, he's retaking that fifth base. He's got command centers to spare. It's really just the Ultras doing the heavy lifting right now for Shin, but I don't know if it's going to be enough, Tasteless. Yeah, you know, the problem is that I think these Ultras are going to get close to getting in, and then they're going to... Uh, oh! oh! I didn't well, even see those connection. I never saw it either. I don't know where that came from. But even with that uh, happening, what I was going to say is even if those Ultras get in, they're going to have to eventually run out. In fact, that one even gets shot down, which means Terran sets up shop at the gold base again. Now, the one thing that Shin has going for him is he's in the top left. And that's not a spot you can push easily. Oh, wow, there's going to be a lot of minerals coming in now. I'm watching that right now. It's at 2K minerals per minute. <laughs> I want to see after, like, two rounds of trips. Yeah. What that never gets up to. All right, Gumiho dropping here on the left side. Oh, no, the mules, not the mules. They did, like, one trip and then have to evacuate. Well, Shin is playing this really well, man. This is a scrappy game. Yeah, this is a very different feel uh, for a TVZ here. There's actually another push coming up here, kind of hitting in between everything else. It's almost pure Ravagers and one low HP Ultra that just instantly gets sniped, but Gumiho has to retreat. Like doesn't have enough on the ground. Every medevac in the game is in yeah. the middle of, like, a drop that just has one medevac. Uh, so Orbital's on like 100 HP. These SCVs, I hope, are coming down to repair and not to mine. Yep. Indeed, coming down to repair. This is not MMA. This bio over here on the right side is doing a good job of preventing Shin from retaking the gold base, retaking that blue base. Dude, every time these mules oh are not mining, God. it is huge. I think those are different mules. They're full on. No, those are, that's another drop of mules. Yeah. That's crazy. That's like 10 mules completely negated right now by Shin. And this is really, you know, the, the macro here for Terran. Gumiho's throwing down additional orbital commands so that he can drop down these mules, so that he can't have this mineral bank. And now this expansion again getting denied. Shit is just everywhere, man. He doesn't even have the creep spread, but he is just so aware of what is going on. He knows which angles to find. I mean, he plays, he's playing this map like he's played it 100,000 times over, you know? Yeah. This is crazy the way he's navigating it. Well, you need more than that to try to protect that base. The tank is going to fall here. The and problem I'm worried about here for Shin is that Gumiho is still building a massive army, 123 yeah. supply on the well, ground. Well, that, that, and the issue as well is like, okay, so I think Shin learned his lesson mid-game and that he can't keep expanding down. He has to expand towards the other top side of the map. But those bases are going to run out too. Terran always grows slower. I want to get some kind of stat for how much damage that command center has taken this game. Because it's just been the same command center the whole time. It's just been burning down this entire, like, yeah. past five minutes. That poor CC. Yeah, it's been on fire the entire game. We've also had that nuke just baking it's in like the It's like the oven. Olympic torch, like it can't go out <laughs> until the uh, until uh, Gumiho's won with a final push. It's even burning. All right, Liberator now coming in. Going to try and stop mining over there on that left base. But Shin has his eyes set again on this gold command center. Oh, no, the live! It's barely out of position. I feel like this command center is net negative minerals in terms of like the repair that's been going in yeah. on it. All right, Gumiho getting a really nice surround on this Ultra. Actually able to pick that off, and Shin knows if he turns around with these bailings, he will not be able to find the big hits he needs. And we're going to see Gumiho try to push up into this upper right corner. There's always been a little bit of counterplay here from Shin where he comes in and tries to smash the gold base. But the reality is that Gumio is also mining from the bottom right and will probably grow into the other bases over there as well. I think we're about to see that poke again here. Gumiho continuing to move through the center now. His standing army is a lot better than Shin's on the ground. Gumiho has mustered a very big force and all oh, these Banelings morphing in. This is a bad time. Yeah, he should really stim in and try to kill that. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised that yeah, he isn't. I was, was just waiting. a lost opportunity there. Okay, he's going to force the cancels. Always got to be careful where you can make the, uh, the Banelings on the map. Keep in mind, Gumiho still has his nuke still sitting around. 
Waiting to see him use that thing. It's been in there all game. Okay, Fumbles actually come in, gets four goes. Those Bailings will connect. This is a big win right now for Shen in the center as even the Siege tanks are getting taken out. More Bailings coming in. The Bio has to micro away. Gumio got caught. Woefully out of position. Now Swipe's coming, Snipe's coming in here on the left side. Argu another Fungal! Plus Blinding Cloud on the Bio! Yeah, and that gets cleaned up. And now we see a lot of damage being dealt down here in the bottom right. Um, we see that uh, Gumio's trying to muster up a little bit more. You know, in some ways, the bottom right position is going to be more important for Terran to control than that gold base. You're always going to be able to reland a command center there and suck up some uh, minerals, almost like it's it's Dune, you know, where they like land somewhere and then they got to pull out <laughs> because the sandworms are going to come. That's sort of what this game is. Um, but yeah, you know, you it's really more important that Gumiho actually sucks up all the minerals at the bottom right. Yeah, and almost this base here on the gold is good at keeping Shin's attention away from that bottom right side of the map because, yeah, you aren't mining this gold base. I'm sure you would love to here as Gumiho. Ooh, nice snipe right there on the Viper. Hopefully these, ooh, the ghosts, they almost got caught by the fungal. Man, Shin has been really sneaky with these fungals so far. Yeah, he's been pretty crafty. Um, Another big move here from Gumiho. Such an interesting game, by the way. This is just such a different TVZ. Yeah, this, uh, <laughs> this is a chaotic one. It's a weird one. Again, the creep spread here for Shin is not good. And I think the biggest issue for Zerg is he can't take another base. It's really hard for him to take 9 o'clock. Okay, Shin actually coming in again. Oh, the Bailings. There's no micro on the right side there by Gumiho. Bailings get a really good connection of all the Marines and the Marauders. Bings and Banes both now trickling in. Another fungal on the front line means more good connections here for Shin, but there's so many reinforcements here for Gumiho. Snipes coming in on those ultras. I mean, Shin has broken this position, but there's still so much bio left on the ground. I mean, it, it feels like that was a massive win for Shin, but the standing army for Gumiho is still bigger somehow. Yeah, it seems like Gumiho always manages to find a way. And then we see Shin run back. Oh, boy. Oh, wow. Lots of SVs not mining over Quiet there. quitting, even in the GSL. <laughs> Unbelievable. GG. Gumiho <laughs> takes game one. And uh, I, I got to say, you know, new map, new ideas. Hard game for Shin, it looked like. Yeah, I, I think, you know, when I first saw this map, I thought it would be good for Zerg because of the gold bases. But the way the architecture is laid out with that high ground in the center, where Terra could just kind of stage every attack from and Zerg is really hard for them to maintain creep. I don't know what Shin does to try and expand to 9 o'clock or retake the gold in 3 o'clock position because Gumiho almost played an exhaust game that didn't get to full exhaust. He just contained Shin on the top line of the map and Shin did everything in his power to throw all these curveballs Gumiho's way. He was throwing you know, Ling and Banling attacks. He was dropping Biles on the gold command center. He was picking off SCBs. He was winning fights with Cheeky fungals, but he never really got the momentum that he needed. It felt like he was basically drowning for 15 minutes and eventually Gumiho snapped his neck. Yeah, yeah. Um, Gumiho able to basically kind of sink back into his position, let the Ultralisks and everything else feed in, and then go right back at it. Guys, game two starting now. Let's do this. Okay, Shin in the bottom left, Gumiho in the top right. A different looking TVZ, obviously the same units, same pieces on the board, so to speak, but the patterns of growth were uh, different. The pacing of what units showed up were different because of the gold minerals. Um, so, you know, another new map here. Let's see if there are also new ideas at play for our players. This is Gumiho playing a little bit differently. He's going to be doing, I, if he makes a second barracks, that double racks Reaper expand. We see sometimes two, or sorry, yeah, three Reapers made total. And then you expo. Beyond popularized it, but it seems like everybody's just sort of taken this and incorporated it into their play style. Yeah, it's just another build that you can mix in in a best of three, best of five, best of seven. It's good. It's a good uh, opener. Gumiho doesn't play this style. Almost ever. Yeah, that's yeah. correct. It's pretty rare for him, but he well, is busting it out here against Shin. 
I think it's because, if I'm not mistaken, Crimson Court actually has three different Reaper spots to get into the main base. Yeah. It's one of the best maps for Reapers that we've had in a while, I think. And there's also a lot of rocks and mineral walls kind of scattered around the map. So the mobility of the Reapers here is very good. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Gumiho actually go up to maybe four or five Reapers as opposed to just three. We'll see how heavily he's going to lean into this. The SCV moves over to the natural expansion. Is Maybe he only going to make two? Third okay, one. Okay, no, he's going to go up. third one. We've also seen. Uh, a, this is a little bit older, but like people make more than three. I do feel like three feels right. That's... Some some of you guys might be asking, like, would you really want to make two barrackses and only get three? It's it's not like. It's the fact that three is the number where you get to really control the map. It starts the fourth. And so he one. starts the fourth. Okay, I'm glad I brought it up then because we've seen games where. People like kept making them. Now, when you keep making Reapers, uh, it should go without saying, but I'll say it anyways, you're not making Marines, right? Marines are just better units later on. But if you're making more and more Reapers, then you need to figure out, okay, what do I want to get done with this? So did he stop it for? I think so. I saw an add-on go for one of the barracks, I believe a tech lab. So if that is just coming in, I think it's only going to be these four Reapers here for yeah. coming home, beginning marine production. But this is good. There's a lot of Reaper spots, again, jumping on the main base here. It's hard for Shin to really get the creep spread to cover all of them. Yeah, and there's this is that be... fourth Reaper now. So he's just going to keep trying to move around mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, you know, Queens beat Reapers, but Reapers have mobility. And you can really abuse them with the grenades and kind of play keep away. Uh, oh, Shin is going for a fast lair. Yeah, this is kind of cool. Two hatch um, lair. I mean, it is hard for him to go for a third base here, and it's a roach form. Are we going to potentially see a Nidus? We could. Maybe he wants to do some kind of a roach attack. Or maybe a, with a, a queen drop. A push up here. Huh. And, I mean, this could have also been prompted because he sees four Reapers. He's like, all right, that's a lot. He's getting uh, two more gases. Now, he only has one gas at his main. So it's always a little bit confusing when you see two gases taken there. Third hatchery is going down at the 9 o'clock position here for Shin. Oh, these, these queens got to be careful. Very low on HP. Don't be surprised if Shin dropped a transfuse on one of those at least. And the tech here a little bit delayed for Gumiho. He's going three barracks into a factory. Of course, going for four Reapers before factory means that you're investing all this gas. It's going to be delayed. And Shin already has his lair tech done, so we'll see exactly how he's going to use it. Right now, just getting Roach speed, adding in an additional gas, so going up to four gas on these two hatches before the third is even done. And it might just be a Roach-heavy style. You know, I'm not really sure what Shin can do with this necessarily. Of course, here is going to come in. I mean, it pops and just immediately gets dumpstered by these Marines. Really good move out there from Gumiho. Luckily, Shin was able to scout it, but. So when you move out with Marines like this, it is high risk, high reward, because there's no medevac accompanying them. There's no way to pick them up. Uh, so there's no way to get out once the damage starts. But it's also a weird moment to come in, right? He's trying to hide the roaches, by the way. I think the Reaper should have seen the roaches. I, I do, by the way, think Gumiho should just turn around. Yeah, he's going to see these roaches and probably have to make a run for it. Oh, no. It's no. like a horror movie. Yeah, yeah. No matter which way they go, yeah. some of the Marines are going in the inconvenient direction. And Ravagers are getting morphed in. So it's going to be a Roach Ravager opening here for Shin. Look at this. Uh, <laughs> I want to say a high-speed chase, but it's really a slow-speed chase. Eight seconds till the Roach speed is done. Okay, he's going to stem forward and try and take this fight right now. This is a pretty good engagement, actually, for Gumiho. Yeah. And with grenades, he can almost stun some of these Roaches. He's going to run back. With one more stim, because Roach Speed is done, he has to stim away or at least fight. Yeah, he's going to commit down to this and then just see what damage he can get away with and keep on running. Oh, can he actually hold on the natural expansion, though? I don't know if he has any siege tanks. One of them is in production. No, no siege tanks out on the field at no, all. No, he has to win this like as a fight, but he's going to have to oh, use man. his infrastructure as the wall. Combat shields already getting targeted down there by oh, Shin. Oh, he can repair that. Oh, he's actually going to finish it. Two, one, zero. Yeah, with now a medevac. He's able okay. to push it away. Is it? Is he going to repair it? I think it's going to finish regardless. All right, oh, he saves there it. We go. So that is pretty bad for Shin. The uh, micro that was displayed there by Gumiho was just good enough that it basically shut down the super aggressive attack, and Shin got nothing of value done. And um, 
you know, there's already tanks out. There's medevacs. Yes, Marines were lost, but you can keep uh, you can keep producing this. I think there's going to be opportunities for pushing to come out here. I do worry if Gumiho attacks too soon, it could be bad. And we see him kind of coming across the map now. I think if he's going to be on the map, he wants to be doing harass style and not push style. Drop coming over here at the 9 o'clock position. Able to get six drones immediately, even going for an Overlord. We'll get that and then lift off. Scan drops, gets this creep tumor as well. So nice little map control play here by Gumiho. Getting a little bit of counter damage done. And you know, I like this opening from Shin because this is a pretty hard map for Zerg, especially in the early game because there are three spots the Reapers can come up into your main base. The Reaper openings can be really powerful. But behind the speed roaches, he droned all the way up to 70 on three bases, has a really healthy economy. Traded out the roaches for the bulk of the Marines, which is a good way of resetting the bio count there. And he's positioned his way in a you know, pretty solid spot here. He really wants to get this high yield Vespian gas base in the center. But he's already getting his hive tech. He's got a good number of Ravagers of Lings. Failing us coming in. 1-1 one, one upgrades also soon to complete here for Shin. I'm liking his build order selection a lot here on this map. Oh, Gumi who actually gets the kill on that hatch. Yeah, I mean, that's a big shutdown. Think about how many games are ended with a push that kills the fourth hatch. That one wasn't even one where it was canceled. It was just killed. It was almost anticlimactic. And Gumiho knows to immediately break away from that position instead of trying to entrench himself. He's going to start to roam. He wants to look for the next fourth base and get that one forced, canceled, or killed. Gumiho repositioning with two armies now. Screw up two medevac marines. Going to go on the left side, try and pick off these roaches, and then work their way up to the drones. But reinforcements come in, shoot them away. Like, Behind it's it, another though, one. That was not. Well, I can't tell if that was canceled or was, not. I think it was. Okay. So Shin does get the cancel over there on the fourth base, but he's still only mining on three bases, and Gumiho has been slowly macroing up back at home to this third command center. And if Zerg is on equal bases with the Terran, they are usually not very happy. And oh my goodness, Gumiho! I was I was afraid he was going to siege up here in the main for a second. Instead, going to be able to retreat away. You know, fully mining minerals from all three of these bases, playing a relatively low gas style. So Shin uh, and these E-Bays are, are fairly late, by the way. That's mm -hmm. one of the reasons why Kumiho was able to be out on the map and do damage as he gave up on upgrades to have more momentum with his push. Um, Shin is almost maxed out. Shin is going to need to have a big counter swing. I feel like he's getting himself in position for it. He's getting yep. melee attack now, plus two carapace is coming in. Adrenal glands are getting upgraded as well as banelings. We have two very high energy vipers that should be max energy when the next battle commences on the map. And Shin is also playing with a low drone count, only 69 drones. And part of that is because Gumiho has been relentless in shutting down these fourth hatcheries. But as a result of it, the standing army here for Shin is really formidable. He's even throwing down an ultralist cavern. He's getting a ton of banelings. This is him kind of playing the same mid to late game as he did in game one, but looking a lot more solid here in game two in terms of how strong his army is relative to Gumiho's. Yeah, I love the um, the Liberator down here just to clear out even Overlords. Be a bit of a nuisance there. Um, we see another pickup over here. And I got to say, I think uh, Gumiho's going to be out of position. He has almost all of his supply in those medevacs that are out on the map. What is actually back here to defend? I'm seeing like one, two, three, three tanks and three marauders. State, this is bad. Yeah, Gumiho is really badly out of position. Now he is going to try to go for a counterattack almost in a pseudo base trade, but that's an army that is pretty good against yours, Gumiho. All those banelings. I think Shin might have actually expected there'd be more back at home. Okay, these Marines going to come in, try and focus power down some drones. Oh, and this drop over here is massive at the fourth base. So Gumiho just killed off 18 drones, 19 drones. You know, it's funny, though. There's a time to uh, harass and a time to stay back and defend. Oh, my goodness. This is an insane catch for Gumiho. The medevacs come through. They get the two Vipers. Shin reset back to zero spellcasters, but the standing army on the ground is still really powerful. And keep in mind, Gumiho, he's far away from getting maxed. Shin is knocking on the door. 59 drones, 130 army supply, a lot of Banelings mixed in here at Ultralisk as well. And Shin is committing in on the attack. Bailings come through. Pretty nice connections right there in the front. Concussive Shell slowing them down a little bit, but there isn't that much bio. Yeah, you can see there's a bit of a log jam here at the entrance with the roaches blocking off the damage that could have been done if they could just slip through. Oh, and you can feel the pain of Gumiho losing those siege tanks just minutes ago. If he had five more siege tanks in this fight, it's an easy hole, but instead, Shin is just barreling down this natural expansion, working his way on top of the production. Yeah, that's going to be a GG. Shin. 
manages to win a game. He felt like he was losing a lot of that. But, you know, again, Gumiho, he needs to know when it's time to pump the brakes, when it's time to defend. Uh, I think there was a moment where it's like, okay, all your supply is on the map. He's going Road Travenger. He has to do a supply dump and attack into you uh, and get to the next phase of the game, which means you need to stay back, enjoy the harassment and the, the denies you got, and then get the game to a place where now you're going to be able to brace for impact, fend off his attacks, and continue to stay ahead. Man, Shin's played a couple of really good, really scrappy games. Game number two, barely able to take a fourth hatchery. Gets canceled and killed two, maybe even three times. Third hatchery about as late as you possibly see it. That was two hatch layer into speed roaches just to get map control and drone behind it. I mean, Shin absolutely rolling with the punches, but Gumiho going a little bit out of the box too, trying that Reaper opening, which we almost never see him do, mixing things up. And now we're going to a map both these players know they've practiced on countless numbers of time. It's Site Delta for the final map of the elimination match. Shin versus Gumiho, the winner, will go on to the final match. The loser is out of the GSL. Okay, Shin in the bottom right, Gumiho in the top left. Um, on a map, these players are both definitely a lot more comfortable and practiced on. What kind of game are we going to get? Uh, you know, it's interesting that Gumiho went for like a normal common build, but just not normal and common for him on that last map. By the way, he was making it work. It, it does seem like he's not quite as clean at playing out the decision making as he's ahead. He seems to get like very mechanical. He's like, now nah, I'm gonna harass here, now nah, I'm gonna hit here. And it's like, no, 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 no. You denied his fourth base twice. You can actually go back home now. Oh, Gumiho gas first with the barracks on the low ground again. No supply depot with the wall in either. Well, huh. wait, no, 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 so it, oh yeah, what? Okay, I was, I was for a second, I'm like, my God, State, he never made a depot, <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> He's hacked into the game. He's doing a no depot opener. Um, okay. Yeah, another mix up. This time it's only one barracks, it's not two barracks, but it's a bit of an unusual opening, although I, I guess considering this is Gumiho, that's kind of par for the course, right? I mean, he, he is a fan of these kind of unique out-of-the-box styles of play, and it's just going to be a really fast factory with a command center follow-up. Factory going to be on the high ground, barracks on the low ground. Perhaps this is to try and catch an overlord that is a little bit too ambitious with the scout. Because it is a marine opening, not a reaper one. But, yeah. Interesting setup. Yeah, this is cool. Gumiho, we're going to see when that command center is going to come down. He's getting close to having enough minerals to do it. But he's going to send the Marine out like this. Is he going to try to catch the Overlord? Yeah, I think he was hoping the first Overlord path was going all the way down there. To the 9 o'clock position, and... If it's not going there, maybe it's going to my third, but no, Shin is smart. He's playing this one really safe. That first overlord just went straight into the middle, checked for proxy barracks, and then parked itself on a pillar. So he's actually going to be coming across the map with these Marines. And one SCV. He's yep. feigning He's feigning like he's going three racks or something, isn't he? he this well, is I don't weird. know. I mean, the thing is... What are you doing, Gumiho? I, I, okay, you, I'm not even going to try to pretend to what are you cooking? know what this is. Is this to deny the third? What are you cooking? What am I seeing? I feel like I'm watching a Wings Liberty game that I just no, don't I, understand. I like, this is thing. like GSL I'm like, season one. I'm yeah, like, nobody like, knows how these units like, work well, yet. Well, before Brood War came out in StarCraft <laughs> 1, this did uh, actually work. So can this possibly work? The, the bunker's are already a third but done. Can the but Queens not just kill the SCV? Isn't that just like an obvious Achilles heel here? If he brought two SCVs, he could repair it, but... Hellions now coming in. Whoa, SCV did okay. go down. Hellions are going to kill pretty I much watching? all of the What links. is his strategy? It's the Gooby build. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen this before. I've I love it, though. I've never seen this before. Bunker finally gets canceled. 
More Hellions are coming down. And, you know, you make a lot of Lings when you see this, but I guess the Hellions beat the Lings. Third Command Center going on behind this. I like this opening here from Gumiho, actually. Well, you mean, know what this did is it forced Shin onto the map. Shin loses a Queen. He loses a ton of Zerglings. He has to remake more, so the drone count is low. Uh, what? That was horrible. <laughs> what am I watching? Banshee, Cloak Banshee is the follow-up. <laughs> the Lings went by the Hellion like a school of fish. That's so funny. Now the Hellions are going to join up. They're going to come into the natural expansion. One of them is very low HP. Oh, can he get this around? He was able to work his way behind the mineral line. Oh, he's trying to juke and jive. I don't think he can do it, though, Tasteless. Too many Lings. What is this game? Gumiho is actually kind of lucky here that Shin is pumping the Dude, brakes on the Lings. we're going to find out Gumiho today is some kind of weird clone time traveler from the past in Wings of Liberty. <laughs> he's trying to make yeah, it work, but it's like, no, listen, here's the thing. Gumiho, it's going to be two expansions later, <laughs> and you have to get to the round of four. I kind of liked the way it was looking at the the, the very, very well, beginning to force the queens out to kill them and pick off the lings, but the follow-up from here has just been so painful with these ling counterattacks. It's, it's so funny to see this, like, the bait. It was like, well, now you're, you're the other Hellion can't, you can't hit it. He's like, I don't care. I'm still going to kill this Hellion. <laughs> yeah. I'm on three base. You have a, a non-functional two base. Crazy openings. I, I mean, I've never seen anything quite like that. I, but I, I, as, it, as it was happening, I kind of get it. Yeah. Like, I see the Hellions come out and fight the Lings. The thing is, you're always going to get Ling speed with that, right? So maybe if there's a wall up at the natural by the time the Lings get cross map, but if you're I mean, going to do that, also, the barracks be down there? Maybe the bunker would have finished in, you know, in another mm. game, and you, know, you would have been able to have the Hellions run behind. Um, the bunker, you know? If the bunker finishes, it changes everything, I think. Yeah. You're right about that. Because we're kind of talking about the strategy as if the bunker's supposed to die, which clearly it's not. Although I think it would have been better to send a second SCV with it. If, I think he would have actually finished the, uh, the bunker if he had a second SCV. Oh, yeah. Repair is busted, man. <laughs> that SCV would yeah. not have gone down to a queen. <laughs> now he's going to go mech because it's Gumiho. Double armory. This game is playing out like a choose-your-own-adventure kind of thing. <laughs> this is playing out very, very strangely. So he's going, first of all, double armory on two base. He does have a third command center in the main. Yeah, but I mean, it, I'm just saying, they got the two two armories really fast. That's like the, the time you get like two eBays when you're going to the third command center inside your main. Gumiho, I think, has done this in the past, though, where if he's not in the best of ways, okay, that engineering bay barely blocking that in. He will just go really greedy on the upgrades. That's him throwing down double army before adding on the additional factories. He's basically just banking that he can make these Hellions keep Shin on his side of the map. Unfortunately for Shin, he wasn't actually able to get the full surround on these Hellions. Should be able to well, pick off at least a couple of them. He might be able to pin him over here on this side. Oh, that's a nice yeah. surround. He's I'm going to get one. He's through slippery. And it looks like this Shin decides to back off. Now, Shin's also going on four bases. He's going to come in here with these two Banshees. He's got a Raven as well. Everything about this game feels weird. Two more factories coming down, going By the up way, to five. It, it should be a giveaway that it's mech play because he's still making Hellions. Yeah. So, you also, know. Also, it's Gumiho. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <that's laughs> you right. haven't seen any Marines. Hurricane engine upgrade coming in. So it's going to be battle mech here with Banshees and one Raven. A lot of Hellions. Not enough service area for the Lynx to actually get the full surround. Shin is going to kind of commit, though. Oh, doesn't get up the natural expansion. I thought he might. Wait a minute. Are there enough Lynx to just kill this? There might be. I really thought there were going to be the SCBs pull coming in. Oh, Hellbat's morphing in. That's right, his armories. Yeah, yeah. I mean, why didn't we do this earlier? That, no, I was, <laughs> I was thinking that when I was watching. Um, so now what? I mean... He doesn't have the Hellbats that he was going to tech into. Now we have Cyclones versus Mutas coming in just a moment. Some Missile Turrets are getting thrown down, but not enough to tell me that Gumiho knows this is what's coming. He's still making Banshees even, which are not going to fare well here against the 11 Mutas about to pop. He's getting the air attack upgrade here too. Roach Warrant's coming along. And it seems like he just wants to go Ling uh, Muta. And I actually think that Shin might just be able to kill him. I only say that because all the Hellions were killed. I would love it if Gumiho stays alive longer. I, we just got to see if that's even possible. He doesn't have cloak, does he? He does. Take that state. 
<laughs> I do state. Um, so he can fly and just, he can fly in and basically ignore, oh, this is pretty crazy. It's a new icon. I think that's the hurricane yeah, engine. Hurricane yeah, it is. going to be taken out. That and is so annoying because the Cyclones are really your, your catch-all solution to the Mutas right now, and now they don't have speed. Now you have slow Cyclones trying to catch up to all these Mutalisks running around the map. And remember, I mean, there's a lot more <laughs> Lings being made. The, oh the, the, the Cyclones God. can drive the Mutas away, but... Sh Shit is on 103 drones, Tasteless. Oh, I didn't even realize 103 that. 103 drones! That's pretty disgusting. Can five bases even support 103 drones? <laughs> like, man, that's crazy! It's a lot of workers. That is so many workers! This economy's just through the roof. More hatchery's gonna get thrown down now. Six Baith getting taken here by Shin, as he has complete map control, only nine mutas, but a ton of lings, getting his hive tech. Basically filling out his tech tree. All the upgrades are coming in. I think that's Groove Spines, Overlord Speed, plus two melee, plus one range here for Shin, among other upgrades. Still triple digit workers. You know how sometimes we watch exhaust games where the Terran is struggling to get the fifth base to get Vespian Geyser number nine and 10 and just hunker right. down and defend and play the, of course. the game. And then, and then Zerg just tries to have enough economy that they can attack enough times to break the Terran before they actually get that fifth base. This is going to be the, the ideal Zerg version of that, I think, where shit is going to have been mining with a hundred and workers for minutes upon minutes upon minutes. I mean, Gumio is at 150. Shit is almost maxed with a 3K bank. It's 1.5K, oh 1K in the God. bank. The Hellions go down, too. So it's going to be showtime here. He's going to be trying to come in and take this fight. Again, it's kind of a scrappy tear in defense. But where's the Overseers here with the Mutas? I just assumed they were going to kind of materialize next to these Ravagers. There they are. So now Corruptors are coming up. I thought he was going to try to do some kind of a push in there and hit that. I think he has to wait for all these upgrades to come online first. Yeah, it makes sense. But really, he doesn't even need to attack into these four bases. He, he might, but he doesn't need to. As long as Terra doesn't take the fifth. I mean, Shin, with such a high economy, he's got to be feeling really good about this position. Now, it is a maxed mech army, so the attacks can't be that inefficient. We do have Vipers getting mixed in. Greater Spire is underway. Two more hatcheries, so Shin shouldn't have an issue with Larva in terms of remaxing. Those 92 drones can finally actually get some. Well, I guess they, they probably already have very good uh, resource distribution, but adding in an additional two bases certainly is going to make sure that persists. So we have static defense morphing in. Both adding some security to these expansions and also freeing up some more supply for Shin to warp in I mean, these high value units. Shin is getting to the point where he has enough map that it's almost an emergency here for Gumiho. Um, the Banshees are going to see this push come in. And um, it's going to be against that battle mech comp. It almost feels like they're going to be pushing into an arc. I feel like this might be the hardest angle to try to come in at. In fact, he, he, Shin doesn't seem to really have his army together here. So it's like. Oh. You're going to have, like, almost, like, 360 <laughs> degrees of Terran units attacking you here. Bailing connection on the left side was huge, though. Hit almost every single Cyclone. Those are some value shots, but the reinforcements coming in from Gumiho. I don't know if he actually has enough anti-air. We're watching the stutter step micro with the Broodlords. <laughs> you know, they have that. A lot of people don't like the Broodlord change because they have less power, but they are more mobile. But Shin is actually using that mobility to some pretty good, uh, pretty good rewards here. Kind of stutter stepping them back. That looked like stingrays flying around. I was just at the aquarium. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that, that attack seemed a little bit clunky, but already uh, Shin has refilled his supply with an army that could attack. And again, Terran knows that there are these exposed bases in the top right, but at the same time, can't really. Uh, get over there and, and fight them. He's got a small army that's moving out there. Oh, a lot of the battle mech is on the top right side of the map. Yeah, list. yeah, that's over there. But here's the problem is that, you know, Shin has bases he can give away. These bases you really can't afford to lose right now. Hydras are going to dive into these Thors. We've got Banelings being made in the back. Banelings coming in from the bottom and connecting onto tanks, apparently. Oh, not and finishing them, though. 
He finally goes back, gets those siege tanks, the Thors fall, and shit, it wasn't the prettiest engagement, but it was a win, absolutely. This third base has just been completely destroyed. Gumiho has very little army left here. It's mostly just Hellions. Yeah. He's struggling for gas. I mean, Terran, if they want to really turtle up on five bases, it's five bases because they need gas number nine and ten, but Gumiho going mech reset down to three bases, six geysers. With the main ones very close to getting mined out, too. I mean, he can't make much more than, what, Hellbat Thor? But is Hellbat Thor going to survive against this? Roaches and Hydras coming into the natural. Shin is maxed again, still with more bank. I don't know if Gumiho has enough on the ground to stop this. I mean, I just don't think there's any world where Gumiho can recoup. So many units that take so long to produce are getting crushed here. This third base is completely exposed. No defense is totally naked. And now these uh, Hydras and Roaches can come down here and crush this. Shin is even expanding into the bottom left. This is going to leave Gumiho on only two bases, plus the ghost town that's just south of this, the one lone command center with nothing there. Yeah, Gumiho all the way down at 35 workers. He's trying to micro these doors and get every value he can. But Shin's economy is still at 90 drones. I mean, the Remax is going to come in, and I don't know what world Gumiho has to live in to try and defend it, because uh, Shin's economy is just off the rails right now. He has so much, taking that bottom left base. Soon those 90 drones will be fully saturated. Yes, Gumiho did kill the expansions in the top right, but they weren't even being harvested from, I think. The drones, if they were there, they had evacuated. And Gumiho's going to try some kind of counterattack. His standing army, still 77 army supply, but again, it's mostly Hellbats. I don't think the numbers are there. You know. It's like a Roach Max for Zerg, you know? Exactly, it's, The yeah. supply is disingenuous. This army look, look actually... Look how good the spine crawlers are versus just the Hellbats here. Yeah, it's kind of insane. Um, I mean, this hatchery will go down, but... By the way, there's already a counterattack here. It's 32 SCVs to the 89. And remember that Zerg is building up that core army. So we've got a whole bunch of, of command centers re-landed here. But Shin is going for a comp that can kill. Gumiho, okay, Siege Tanks are a really good addition in this fight. If Shin takes one bad engagement, he might not actually have the resources to remax and just end this game outright. Okay, well. <laughs> Yoink's coming in on the Thors and the Siege Tanks. Yeah, he tries to get one more Yoink in there, but that Viper's shot down. Kills off some tanks. It's important to note what State was saying. Like The unit compositions are changing slightly for Gumiho, so it's important that Shin is able to also reconfigure the right composition. Oh, the Hellbat drops on the Hydras. Oh, that's so sick. Nice play here from Gumiho. He's still only at 100 supply, but he's taking the best possible fights he can. I just don't think this army has enough firepower, man. Yeah. Uh, sub 100 supply, Terran. Another landing. He does have a lot of orbitals, so he can drop all of these mules, but he is just so broke. And still Shen on 87 drones. He's fully saturated the bottom left base, save the the Vespian geysers, but Shin is gas rich right now. This top right base with all those spine crawlers, I don't think the same Hellion run buyers are gonna get anything done over there. Four more siege tanks here for Gumiho, but Shin again with all this Vespian gas, he's making nine broods. He has three Vipers on the board. I think we're just slowly watching Gumiho bleed out. Yeah, I think at this point in time, Shin's being extra careful. Mm -hmm. Like, he realizes, okay, okay, okay. This guy has, like, nothing. I just have to pull it together and close this out. I can't get sloppy. I mean, let's not forget some of the losses that we saw already today where it seemed like Gumiho just 100,000% had the game, and then it ended. And so this is kind of him, I think, playing a little bit of a slower but also safer game. Most of this has already been won. He just has to have that kind of finishing blow, not overextend not be impulsive. The only units Gumiho has on the ground that shoot up are two Thors, and we have two there joints it is. GG. for him. Okay. <laughs> yep. GG. Beautiful game wow. uh, from Shin. I got to say, kind of a, you know, sometimes when Gumiho starts to lose, he's like, I'm just going to make this really, 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 really weird. Yeah. Well, Shin going to advance to that final match to face off against Stats. The rematch. Remember how sick those games were? Those are really good games. We're going to get two more of them. Yeah. Action pack too. Fast games. Um, let's see what happens is they uh, have that rematch here. Yeah, Gumiho with another good performance here at GSL. Not going to be going into the top four, but 
I mean, Gubio consistently just racks up top eight after top eight after top eight, it feels like. This guy has been so consistent here in Korea over the past couple of years. One of the best Terran players in the world, but we'll have to see what Shin can do in the rematch against Stats, guys. We're gonna be back after this short break with Group B's final match. Except the loss, I'm hard headed. There's a little bit of madness to my method. Many falling off that fine line that I'm treading. I risk anything to be great, and I'm not letting nobody rob me of my victory. Number one, that's what I'm meant to be. When by any means, only thing that makes sense to me, I can make nice or make history. I got that dog in me, yeah. Turn me up. Big energy, got the crowd going up. I got that dog in me, yeah. I don't need a one no one. I got that dog in me, yeah. I'm talking all bite, no bark. I could rip your squad up. I got that dog in me, huh. So what's up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's up? I told him move over. Enough of that mediocre I've been. The man is cruising around in the stroller I got. Ice in my veins like a cut in Minnesota. Why not? Show you how I'm built. Come a little closer. A lot of heart, been smart. Aura got a glow. We can restart, give head start, still get the same result. I'm about mine. Don't you get it confused? I'm a win. Win again. Yeah, that's all that I do. I got that dog in me. Yeah, turn me up. Big energy. Got the crowd going up. I got that dog in me. Yeah. Any up. I don't need a one no one got that dog in me, yeah. I'm talking all bite, no bark. I could grip your squad up. I got that dog in me, huh? So what's up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's up? They don't get it. I'm different. I'm the type to break through the door. 